Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to be reading Chapter 4, Flat Stanley, The Museum Thieves. Sit back and watch. We'll read along as we share Flat Stanley, The Museum Thieves. Mr. and Mrs. O.J. Dark lived in the apartment above the lamb chops. Mr. Dark was an important man, the director of the famous Museum of Art downtown in the city. Stanley Lambchop had noticed in the elevator that Mr. Dark, who was ordinarily a cheerful man, had become quite gloomy, but he had no idea what the reason was. And then at breakfast one morning, he heard Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop talking about Mr. Dart. I see, said Mr. Lambchop, reading the paper over his coffee cup, that still another painting has been stolen from the famous museum. It says here that Mr. J, Mr. O.J. Dart, the director, is at his wit's end. Oh dear, are the police no help? Mrs. Lambchop asked. It seems not, said Mr. Lambchop. Listen to what the chief of police told the newspaper. We suspect a gang of sneak thieves. These are the worst kind. They work by sneakery, which makes them very difficult to catch. However, my men and I will keep trying. Meanwhile, I hope people will buy tickets for the policeman's ball and not park their cars with the signs say don't. The next morning, Stanton Lambchop heard Mr. Dart talking to his wife in the elevator. Those sneak thieves work at night, Mr. Dart said. It is very hard for our guards to stay awake when they have been on duty all day. The famous museum is so big we cannot guard every picture at the same time. I fear it is hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. Suddenly, as an electric light bulb had lit up in the air above his head, giving out little shooting lines of excitement. Stanley Lambchop had an idea. He told it to Mr. Dart. Stanley, Mr. Dart said, if your mother will give her permission, I will put you in your plan to work this very night. Mrs. Lambchop gave her permission, but I will have to take a long nap, this, but you will have to take a long nap this afternoon, she said. I won't have you up until all hours unless you do. They had eat that evening after a long nap, Stanley went with Mr. Dark to the famous museum. Mr. Dark took him into the main hall where the biggest and most important paintings were hung. He pointed to a huge painting that showed a bearded man wearing a floppy velvet hat playing a violin for a lady who was on a couch. There was a half man, half horse person standing behind them and three fat children with wings were flying above. That, Mr. Dark explained, was the most expensive painting in the world. There was an empty picture frame on the opposite wall. We shall hear more about that later on. Mr. Dark took Stanley into his office and said, it is time for you to put on a disguise. I already thought about that, Stanley Lambchop said, and I brought one, my cowboy suit. It has a red bandana that I can tie over my face. No one will recognize me in a million years. No, Mr. Dart said, you'll have to wear the disguise I have chosen. From the closet, he took out a white dress with a blue sash, a pair of shiny little pointed shoes, a white straw hat with a blue band that matched the sash, and a wig and a stick. The wig was made of blonde hair, long and done in ringlets. The stick was curved at the top, and it too had a blue ribbon on it. And the shepherd dressed disguise, Mr. Dart said, you will look like the paint, a painting that belongs in the main hall. We do not have cowboy pictures in the main hall. Stanley was so disgusted he could hardly speak. I'll look like a girl that's what I will look like, he said. I wish I had never had my idea. But, he was a good sport, so he put on the disguise. Back in the main hall, Mr. Dart helped Stanley climb up into the empty picture frame. 
Stanley was able to stay in place because Mr. Dart had cleverly put four small spikes on the wall, one for each hand and foot. The frame was a perfect fit. Against the wall, Stanley looked just like a picture. Except for one thing, Mr. Dart said, shepherd dresses, shepherdess are supposed to look happy. They smiled at their sheep in the sky. He looked fierce, not happy, Stanley. Stanley tried hard to get a faraway look in his eyes and even smile a bit. Mr. Dart stood back a few feet and stared at him for a moment. Well, he said, it may not be art, but I know what I like. He went off to make certain that other parts of Stanley's plan was taken care of and Stanley was left alone. It was very dark in the main hall. A little bit of moonlight came through the windows and Stanley could just make out the world, world's most expensive painting on the opposite wall. He felt as though the bearded man with the violin and the lady on the couch and the half horse, half person and the winged children were all waiting as he was for something to happen. Time passed and he got tired -er and tired -er. Anyone would be tired this late at night, especially if they had to stand in a picture frame balancing on little spikes. Maybe they won't come, Stanley thought. Maybe the sneak thieves won't come at all. The moon went behind the clouds and then the main hall was pitch dark. It seemed to get quieter too with the darkness. There was absolutely no sound at all. Stanley felt the hair on the back of his neck prickle beneath the golden curls of his wig. The creaking sound came right out in the middle of the main hall. And even as he heard it, Stanley saw it in the same place, a tiny yellow glow of light. The creaking came again, and the glow got bigger. The trap door had opened in the floor, and two men came up through it into the hall. Stanley understood everything all at once. These must be the stick thieves. They had a secret trap door entrance into the museum from outside. That's why they had never been caught. And now tonight, they were back to steal the most expensive painting in the world. He held very still in his picture frame and listened to the sneak thieves. This is Max of the first one. This is where, where we art robbers pull a sensational job whilst the civilized community sleeps. Right, Luther, said the other man. In all this great city, there is no one to suspect us. Ha-ha, thought Stanley Lambchop. That's what you think. The sneak thieves put down their lanterns and took the world's most expensive painting off the wall. What would we do to anyone who tried to capture us, Max? The first man asked. We would kill him. What else? said his, his friend replied. That was enough for Stanley, and he was even more frightened when Luther came over and stared at him. The sheep girl, Luther said. I thought the sheep girls were supposed to smile, Max. This one looks kind of scared. Just in time, Stanley managed to get a far away look in his eyes again and to smile, sort of. You're crazy, Luther, Max said. She's smiling, and what a pretty little thing she is, too. That made Stanley furious. He waited until the sneak thieves had turned back to the world's most expensive painting, and he shouted out in his loudest, most terrifying voice, Police! Police! Mr. Dark! The sneak thieves are here! The sneak thieves looked at each other. Max said the first one tried very quietly. I think I heard the sheep girl yell. I think I did too, said Max in a quivery voice. Uh, oh boy, yelling pictures. We both need a rest. You'll get a rest, all right, shouted Mr. Dart, rushing in with the chief of police and lots of guards and policemen behind him. You'll get arrested. That's what. Ha, ha, ha. The sneak thieves were too mixed up by Mr. Dart's joke and too frightened by the policemen 
to put up a fight. Before they knew it, they had been handcuffed and led away to jail. The next morning in the office of the chief of police, Stanley Lamb chopped out a medal. The day after that, his picture was in all the newspapers. He wrote, Black boy helps capture art thieves. That's the end of our chapter for today. Tune in Monday as we finish Flat Stanley. And don't forget, have fun with Flat Miss Braswell this weekend.